Hi guys, it is an absolutely, and I mean spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day. Here in paradise, in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this absolutely glorious spring day, I guess some blizzard is blowing into the Rocky Mountains right now, but here in this undisclosed swamp, it is one gorgeous day. To be alive on a collapsing planet and I've got folks coming in any minute to, for the hip camp so I got to get this place cleaned up for my visitors this weekend but uh, before I do that do what I do every Friday <clears throat> and that is go over there to mongabay.com mongabay.com and see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls that mongabay.com as they go around the planet chronicling the collapse of a planet and uh, I'm trying to make a fundamental decision about this rant do I include the hopium stories or do I just stick to the realistic uh, doomer stories you know, my uh, every week I come on here and say, you know, that, that Rhett Butler uh, knows more than any human being on this planet how doomed we are. And if anybody should be completely devoid of, of any shred of hope, it would be proud Father Rhett Butler. So I am going just to edit out the hopium. You can go on mongabay.com and if you want to read all of this apocalyptic hopium soap soap crap, uh, you know, Manga Bay making lemonades out of lemons, you're welcome to. We're going to stick with the honest lemons and not waste our breath on, uh, on the hopium. So uh, here's a good lemon. We're going to start in uh, Madagascar. You will not believe this lemon headline. <clears throat> Slash and burn farming eats away at a Madagascar haven for endangered lemurs and frogs. This is the Arkeny Zarmena Corridor, a protected area in Madagascar has experienced a surge in deforestation in the past five months driven largely by slash and burn agriculture. Slash and burn agriculture, this is planet nibbling. This is not planet eating, this is planet nibbling. Which you have enough aphids nibbling your planet it's, a, it's all the same end result as having a couple of white-tail buck deer uh, in your garden nibbling your planet. The result is the same. It's death by a million cuts instead of death by a thousand cuts. Anyway, now that we've cleared that up, the loss of forest threatens rare and endangered wildlife found nowhere else on the planet including lemurs and frogs and geckos. Other factors fueling the deforestation include mining for gemstones and cutting down trees to make charcoal. Yes, the problem in this protected area yes, is emblematic of a wider trend throughout Madagascar in both protected and unprotected. In both protected and unprotected areas, there is no difference between the two. Where one and a half million hectares, otherwise known as 3.7 million acres of forest, has been obliterated off the face of this planet since 2001. And of course, in 2001, 90% of the forest there were already gone. Okay, so Manga Bay, uh, you know, has their own YouTube channel, and so uh, not surprised to see their YouTube video this week is talking about the critically endangered Sumatran rhino. 
which we've covered uh, in print the past few weeks. Okay, I absolutely love it when they ask a question in a headline. <clears throat> Can agroecology feed the world? Can agroecology feed the world? The answer to the question, can agroecology feed the world, is no. Agroecology cannot feed the world. Uh, nothing can feed the world where we're heading to 10 billion people. Oh shit, I said there was going to be no uh, apocalyptic hopium. Yes, and I've already slipped up. But anyway, the answer to the question is no, it cannot. Alright, we got some hopium. We're going to skip. Okay, let's go to Norway. Mink whales for dinner. Alright. Licking my chops. Mink whales for dinner. Norway's controversial whale hunt is still on. Norway has announced that it will target up to 1,278 mink whales in its upcoming whaling season, which is the same quota as the past two years. <clears throat> While the Norwegian government says its whaling program is sustainable, some scientists, conservationists, and animal welfare experts counter this claim. Yes. Anti-whaling advocates also point to a growing body of evidence that suggests that whales play a pivotal role in regulating the marine ecosystem and that whales are worth more alive than dead. There has been a global moratorium on commercial whaling since 1986, but Norway and of course Japan chooses to reject this global ban. That is Norway saving the planet. Okay, let's go from Norway to Indonesia and anywhere else on the planet. You can just, you, you can, you can uh, substitute any country's name for Indonesia. This is just Indonesia. <clears throat> Mining sites in Indonesia's disaster prone areas a ticking time bomb. Nearly 800 mining concessions in Indonesia are located in areas prone to earthquakes, landslides, and floods, a new report shows. Environmental activists say the proliferation of these mining concessions shows a lax attitude, a lax attitude by companies and the government in the pocket of the mining companies toward environmental risk assessment. They warned that mining activities in these areas could lead to disaster for the environment and local communities, including spills of toxic tailings and pollution of water resources. Yes, do you think so? All right, we're gonna skip the hopium. We're going to skip the hopium. Okay, now now this one, every once in a while, uh, e even I have to report on some hopium, mainly just because the, the reason I'm, I'm making an exception for this story is because it's, a, it, it, well, anyway, you can decide for yourself. Dutch to limit forest biomass subsidies possibly signaling EU sea change. The Dutch Parliament has voted to disallow the issuing of new subsidies for 50 planned forest biomass for heat plants, a small but potentially key victory for researchers and activists who say that the burning of forest to make energy is not only not carbon neutral, but it is in fact dirtier than burning coal and bad climate policy. <clears throat> With public opinion opposing forest biomass as a climate solution, 
now growing in the EU, the decision by the Netherlands could be a bellwether. In June, the EU uh, will decide whether to continue allowing biomass uh, subsidies and not counting biomass emissions at the smokestack. Currently, you know, this is part of the UN sustainability goals is what this is all about. Currently, forest biomass burning, which means burning trees, <coughs> mowing down living forest and burning them instead of fossil fuels, yes, to save the planet, burn, you know, burning down standing forests to uh, save the planet from uh, fossil fuels uh, is ruled as carbon neutral in the EU even though a growing body of scientific evidence has shown that it takes many decades until forests regrow for carbon neutrality to be achieved. Yes, the forest industry which continues to see increasing demand for wood pellets, argues that biomass burning is environmentally sustainable and a viable carbon-cutting solution compared to coal. Mm -hmm. All right, a little bit of hopium. No hopium allowed today. Uh, okay, nope, hopium. Okay, now we get back to reality. Let's get the latest news on the Belo Monte Dam. Amazon's Belo Monte Dam cuts Zingu River flow 85%. This is a crime. Indigenous, say. In February, Brazil, Brazil's Environmental Agency, I, I love that, uh, uh, that contradiction in terms, Brazil's Environmental Agency, yes, permitted Belo Monte mega dam operator Norte Energia to drastically reduce flows to the big bend of the Zingo River for at least a year. That decision reversed an earlier ruling to maintain much higher flows and the fishery as legally required. The flow reduction, you know, uh, signed off by Bozo Nero's environmental agency will leave 70% of the usually flooded forest dry this season, causing massive fish mortality and diminished reproductions. Yeah, experts say, um, Zingo Vivo Para Sempre denounced the decision as, quote, a death sentence for the Zingu River and demanded, and demanded that the, you know, and the environment minister and the CEO of this energy company be, quote, criminally prosecu prosecuted. Oh, God. There you go. Uh, anyway, guys, I could go on with this. What's going on in Papua New Guinea? Uh... I always add New Guinea because that's what we all know about it. One million hectares of Papuan forest licensed for clearing, otherwise licensed for being obliterated off the face of the planet. Natural rainforest spanning 1.1 million hectares, otherwise known as 2.7 million acres in Indonesia's Papua region have now been slated for conversion. Slated for conversion, meaning slated for being bulldozed and obliterated off the face of the planet. Mostly for oil palm plantations, according to a new report by a coalition of NGOs. Right now, 
more than 99% of these forests, which are now slated to be destroyed for palm oil, are still standing. But activists warn they will be vulnerable after a moratorium on new oil palm plantations expires. Yes, the deforestation of these forests could be devastating for the indigenous communities and the rich wildlife and plants of this biodiverse region. Where have we heard this story before? I did not realize, we didn't go over to Japan, where I did not realize there were any grasslands left in Japan. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> what's going on with it, like in Japan, like anywhere else on the planet? Grasslands <coughs> face growing threats from humans on a global scale, especially land use changes like agriculture and urban growth. Yes, imagine that. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Our identity is non negotiable, says Gwich'in indigenous leader. Yes. Talking about Anwar. Anyway, I think Joe Biden has saved Anwar. Last I heard. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's look at the state of human rights among indigenous peoples in five tropical forest countries. We're going to go to Brazil, Colombia, Peru, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Indonesia to look at a new report evaluating the state of human rights. One of the key findings of the new report is that governments in these countries are prioritizing the expansion of the energy sector, infrastructure, mining, logging, and the development of industrial agriculture close to or indeed inside indigenous territories while loosening oversight of land grabbing and illegal deforestation. There you go. I think that sums it up. You would not believe that governments in Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Congo, and Indonesia are prioritizing the expansion of the energy sector, infrastructure, mining, logging, and industrial agriculture inside indigenous territories while loosening oversight of land grabbing and illegal deforestation. That's why I love Rhett Butler for reminding me of this every Friday so I can forget about it well before Saturday morning. What is the great threat to Latin America's marine sanctuaries? How about illegal fishing, which is uh, another word for humans? All right. Illegal fishing the great threat to Latin America's marine sanctuaries, which is the same headline as humans, the great threat to Latin America's marine sanctuaries. Yes. Uh, so an investigative collaboration of all of these people looked at illegal fishing and the threats it poses to Latin America's marine sanctuaries. Many Latin American marine protected areas do not have enough surveillance or budget to prevent these crimes, and in some cases lack even a management plan defining a monitoring strategy. It is in this context that foreign fleets, particularly from China, including boats with a history of illegal fishing, cross marine sanctuaries during their journeys. I bet they do. 
But anyway, guys, uh, I'm just going to wrap it up here. I could go on with this. I understand I am talking to myself, and I really do need to uh, get ready for my hip campers. Come see me at Crazy Crane Campground. If you want to find out where I am and uh, how you can come visit, just uh, Google Crazy Crane Campground Hip Camp. Come see me. I will be around about another month. I will be here for somewhere between four and six weeks before heading back to Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, where I will have another uh, hip camp at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So catch up with me and Sancho Panza at some point this year. and Get out there and enjoy this spec particularly gorgeous day on this planet while you still can. Bye guys.